West Virginia's Mothman is said to be a humanoid creature with glowing red eyes. He is typically 7 foot tall with 10 to 15 foot wingspan and is able to travel 100 miles per hour. The question that I want to know is, is it biologically possible? So first of all, does Mothman have feathers? Sometimes he's described with them, and bird wings don't really seem to make sense without them. As we are currently, humans cannot grow feathers. We do not have the right genetic structure for it. Carotene is a compound made with proteins and is what hair, fingernails, and bird feathers are made out of. Since we are warm-blooded mammals like birds, we develop carotene in our system. Yes, it could be possible for humans to grow feathers, although it is incredibly unlikely since we evolved from a different path, a completely different branch of the tree of life. Birds are avians, dinosaurs, and humans are simians, primates. We never needed feathers as we are ground walkers. Our bones are solid whereas birds are hollow. Our structure is rugged while theirs is fragile which makes them lighter. So to fly, Mothman would have to be a strange bird humanoid that has all the quality of birds such as hollow bones and strong pectoral muscles but resemble the shape of a man in some way. And yes, it would make sense for him to have feathers. Now let's talk about flight. The bodies of birds are adapted for flying, as I said. Many of the birds' bones are hollow, which make for light, rigid skeletons. Also, flying birds have large chest muscles that move the wings. Birds have feathers that help them fly, and tails that help birds direct flight. Mothman does not have a tail based on witness sightings, and therefore cannot direct flight. This would make flying very difficult and probably not allow him to go 100 miles per hour. It would be pretty impossible for Mothman to chase and keep up with cars like he did in the sightings if he couldn't direct flight. The average weight of a 7 foot tall man is 250 pounds. Can his 10 to 15 foot wingspan carry that? The heaviest flying bird that still exists today is the Cory Buzzard. Males weigh an average of 35 pounds but can reach up to 44 pounds. They are 4 feet 11 foot tall on average with 9 foot wingspan. They spend most of their time on the ground, only rarely flying, which doesn't sound good for the possibility of the Mothman. Using the 40 foot pound 9 foot wingspan Cory as a starting point, the 250 pound Mothman would need to have 5.7 times the wingspan of the Cory. 44 times 5.7 equals 250.8, and 9 times 5.7 equals 51.3. So using this ratio, a 250 pound Mothman would need to have 51 foot wingspan, probably did that wrong. First, the massive wings would add its own weight, and we'd still need to add the weight of the strong flight muscles. But math is hard, so let's try a different starting point of a non-living flying creature to get a closer size comparison. The closest to human size flying dead thing I could find is the Quetzalcoatl Atlas. If we go by the latest estimates, it has an average wingspan of 33 to 36 feet, and the creature's weight is 440 to 550 pounds. So if we take the 440 small size Quetzalcoatl Atlas and cut it in half by dividing it in two, we have a 220 pound creature with 16.5 wingspan or a small mothman and a 270 pound creature with an 18 feet wingspan or a big mothman but I don't know if it's capable of flight especially since they're still unclear if the Quetzalcoatlus can fly and if so how fast some researchers have suggested that these animals employed slow soaring flights while others have concluded that the flight was fast and dynamic in 2010 Donald Henderson argued that the mass had been underestimated even the highest estimates and it was too massive to have achieved powered flight Henderson argued that it may have been flightless however most other flight capability estimates have disagreed with Henderson's research, suggesting an animal superbly adapted to long-range extended flight. In 2010, Professor Mike Habib and paleontologist Mark Witten undertook further investigation to the claims of flightlessness in large parators. After factoring wingspan, body weight, and aerodynamics, a computer model led them to conclude that smaller Quetzalcoatlus was capable of flight up to 80 miles an hour for 7 to 10 days at altitude of 15,000 feet. Mike Habib further suggested a maximum flight range of 8,000 to 12,000 miles for bigger Quetzalcoatlus. An atomic study of the Quetzalcoatlus and other large parator forearms shows a higher degree of robustness than would be expected if they were purely quadrupedal. Habib believes that large pterosaurs most likely utilized a short burst of powered flight in order to then translate into thermal soaring. So in other words, it either couldn't fly or it glided using its strong forearms to create short bursts of flight. Mothman could very well have muscular forearms, but its flight pattern is the complete opposite of short bursts. It's reported by witnesses to move like a helicopter, straight up, only flapping its wings for takeoff and not flapping in flight. But remember that our Mothman is half the size of the Quetzalcoatlus. Could it be more likely to be able to fly and travel faster? Maybe up to 100 miles per hour. One last starting point for comparison. The largest flying dead bird I could find, the Pelagoras sandersi, or however the heck you pronounce that, is a species of extinct flying bird discovered in 2014 with a wingspan estimated to be between 20 and 24 feet. If the larger estimated wingspan holds true, this makes it the largest flying bird yet discovered. Some scientists express surprise at the idea that this species could fly at all, given that at between 48 to 88 pounds, it would be considered too heavy by the predominant theory of the mechanics by which birds fly. 
The person who discovered the species thinks we'll be able to fly in part because of its relatively small body and long wingspan, because it spends most of its time over the ocean, where the bird relied on wing currents rising up from the ocean to keep it aloft. Okay, once again, we have something using clever tricks like currents or short bursts of powered flight to be able to even fly. Making all of this seem like the creature's built like it shouldn't be able to fly. Making all of this being possible seem shaky. Then adding the 100 miles per hour flight and traveling across the world make it seem very unlikely. Not to mention that if the Mothman had hollow bones, the chest strength necessary, and was always in the flight position, he looked less and less humanoid and more and more like a bird. If you take a human being and fully adapt it for flight, giving it the attributes of a bird, after a while you'll most likely end up with just a bird. Also, I'm pretty sure the fact that these creatures existed in prehistoric time affects the flight in the comparison to modern day oxygen in the atmosphere. The 44 pound Cory bird is probably the biggest flying bird in modern times for a reason. The fact that we don't see flight capable birds as heavy as humans probably tells us that that biological process and the present conservation of oxygen in our atmosphere preludes this kind of energy density that would allow a bird to be as heavy as a human being and capable of flight. Lastly, the strange flight pattern described by witnesses always mentioned Mothman going straight up like a helicopter and only flapping for takeoff. Taking that pattern into account and comparing it with these other creatures, it does not seem biologically possible, but who knows? Maybe someone with better math and science skills can figure this out. I'm a huge fan of the Mothman, it would be awesome if he was possible or if he was real, but it doesn't seem that way. Everyone in the comments section, I need to know. Any scientists, biologists, or people who are good at math, please tell me. Can a 7 foot tall, 250 pound man fly? If so, what would his wingspan be? And what weight would need to be added for his wings? Could he fly 100 miles per hour? Is Mothman biologically possible?